now going to talk about the control gramian. And these uh, pictures actually are related to the control gramian. There's one particular author who, uh, who for large scale systems, showed that the gramian was related to these figures, kind of pretty. Um, but anyway, the control gramian, or sometimes the controllability gramian. So our control map was a matrix. And so I can take the control map times its adjoint and define that as the controllability gramian. So notice that since I go from T0 to T, um, I, I can get various gramians for the same problem. And here's a fact, an important fact. The range of K is equal to the range of this matrix, the original matrix. So even though I'm multiplying this by the adjoint, I can show that the range of these two is identical. So that's helpful. And the, part of the reason that's helpful is because K itself, when I multiply it, it out this way, this is an N by N matrix. Okay. Whereas the matrix, the control map matrix, is of dimension N by NP. Um, sorry, N by NM, N times M. So in general, this will be a larger, it will be a shortened fat matrix, a fat matrix. So... So the range of this is equal to the range of this. If k is positive definite, so notice this, I can see that I have something times its transpose that is at least semi-definite. It's possible for it to be positive definite, in which case we can actually define the pseudo-inverse of the matrix this way. Also, if k is positive definite, then the control map times the pseudo-inverse is an identity matrix. That, so that is the right the, the pseudo inverse is in fact a right inverse. And so this leads us to another controllability test. Our system with matrices A, B is controllable if and only if the controllability Gramian up to time n, t naught plus n, is positive definite. Okay, so if that so that's one way of test so rather than checking the range, which is more complicated because we have to check linear independence, I can actually do it this way by checking the sign definiteness of the controllability Gramian. Now the controllability Gramian has some semi-group properties. We've seen some semi-groups before. So the controllability Gramian from T0 to T0 is just zero. The controllability gra Gramian from T0 to T plus one instead of T0 to T. T0 to T plus one is given by this. And we notice this, this looks an awful lot like a, like a Lyapunov equation, discrete Lyapunov equation. Okay. Um, so notice here, I'm I'm doing this in general. That is, this this holds for linear time varying systems as well as linear time invariant systems. And our controllability Gramian from T naught to T two satisfies this property. It's T one to T two, T naught to T T one with the state transition matrix on either side. So in general, we don't know if K is going to be invertible, and so there, therefore we don't have a group. We only have semi-group properties. Now, one of the things about the Gramian that's helpful for us is we can solve this problem. If I want to minimize the control sequence from T0 to T, subject to the fact that this control sequence needs to satisfy this equation. So that's the transfer problem. So we're looking at... so. The, the, the two norm of this sequence is a calculation of the energy in that sequence. We've, saw, we've seen that before, the two norm. And so this is saying I want to minimize the energy subject to the fact that, that the control sequence satisfies this equation. So in general, this is an underdetermined problem. Um, and we've seen a solution to the linear algebra underdetermined problems, and it basically is, as long as the range is all of our n, then the optimal solution is given by the pseudo inverse. Okay, so in this case, we get an actual equality. If we don't, if if it's not all of our n, then in general we will not get equality here, and so the the constraint in our minimization problem is not satisfied. Okay, so so we have that. So we have a solution. It's given by the control map pseudo inverse times this quantity okay times that quantity 
So if we wanted to actually, so this, this gives us the, the entire control sequence. If we want to look at the individual values, this is actually what we would use for the individual values. So this goes up to time t, and so this formula is val val valid from t naught to t for k values between t naught and t. So t is a fixed value, and so this is actually a fixed matrix when we take the inverse. And so we have this. So notice this quantity here is t naught to t. It doesn't involve k. K appears here and here. Okay, but it does not appear in any of the rest of this stuff. Okay, so. The, the energy of the system, so we've talked about minimum energy, the energy in the system when you apply this control sequence is given by this. And this actually, whenever you have a vector and it's transpose multiplying a matrix inverse, this actually is a, uh, it describes an ellipse. That is, if we set this value equal to some number, say one, so we, let's say we have unit energy, the values of these vectors that sat that satisfy equality are uh, on an ellipse. Okay, all the values that satisfy this being equal to one is an ellipse. So for a fixed amount of energy, this describes an ellipse. Now we can actually show that the the Gramian can be written this way. So from t naught to t can be written as k equals zero to t minus t naught minus one a to the power kb, so this is an, for the LTI system, times the transpose of that quantity. So we have this, and, and we can define this for any system, stable, unstable, whatever. We can always define the Grammy in this way. So notice that instead of actually having to form the, um, the control map and then compute the Gramian from the control map, we can actually compute it directly from the A and B matrices this way. Now, if the spectral radius of, this, of the matrix A is less than 1, that is in discrete time, if the system is stable, then as T goes to infinity, A to the power K goes to infinity, and so our control Gramian, which we can think of as from T naught to infinity, is given by this expression. And we've actually seen this thing before, kind of. Kind of, almost, kind of, but but basically this infinite summation of all of this stuff. So if we if we were to look, this matrix actually satisfies this Lyapunov equation, and that's where we saw something like this infinite summation. It's a solution to a Lyapunov equation. Notice that it's not the same Lyapunov equation as we use to prove stability, because remember that had an A transpose on this side and A on this side, but it's still a Lyapunov equation. It's a discrete Lyapunov equation. And so re recall that this Lyapunov equation proves stability if BB transpose is positive definite and K is positive definite, then this would show stability for the system. In our case, however, in, or rather in general, we will not generally have this. So it's possible, for, well, if you have a single input system, then B is just a column. So BB transpose is a square matrix, but it's going to be uh, positive semi-definite, not positive definite. So generally this will not be true. Uh, generally you will have fewer inputs than you have states, in which case this will not be true, definitely not be true. So, But we can still actually prove stability, and we'll come back later when we talk about controllability, and use the Lyapunov equation to prove stability for a system. Okay, And in fact, this is how we would do it. So, we have this matrix. Uh, so here's here's our, our uh, Gramian, and we have these three results. If the spectral radius of A is less than 1 and K is positive, then K will be positive definite if and only if AB is controllable. So there's a relationship between stability, controllability, and the, posit the matrix K being positive definite. Okay. Now, in general, stability and controllability are completely separate properties. A system can be stable and controllable or stable and uncontrollable and so forth. They're, they're completely independent. But what this does is it says they're, they're related through a positive definite K matrix. Similarly, if K is positive definite and the matrix AB is controllable, then that proves that will prove that the spectral radius of A is less than 1. The system is stable. So if, I ha if this equation gives me a positive definite K and if AB is controllable, 
that proves that's you we can prove that the spectral radius of a is strictly less than one similarly if k is positive semi-definite and if a b is stabilizable that satisfies this so stabilizable. we'll talk about that basically uh it is it refers to uh, modes of of controllability then the spectral radius of a is less than one so we don't even have to have controllability which stabilizability is weaker than controllability semi-definite is weaker than positive definite so this is a very strong theorem this one is not as strong but we can still get stability as a proof out of it now we're going to move on to modal aspects of controllability we've already seen that putting the system into a diagonal form can simplify the analysis of systems the diagonal form of the system reveals eigenvalues and also controllability the diagonal form is based on the use of eigenvectors so here I'm when I use eigenvectors in terms of controllability I'm going to be using left eigenvectors so I have non-zero vectors such that a w a is equal to lambda w what happens if w b is equal to zero so suppose that w b is equal to zero well we multiply w times the control map so here's the control map I can distribute this w through the entire matrix okay so each each term I can multiply by w wb is wb wab is lambda times w b and I can show that w times a squared is equal to w times uh, lambda squared times w so that is uh, the left eigenvector of, of the matrix A is also the left eigenvector of any power of the matrix A. And the eigenva eigenvalue is the power of the eigenvalue. Okay, so as I continue along, so this gives me lambda to the t minus t naught minus 1 times w. So we have this. So if wb is equal to 0, notice that each of these terms has wb in it, and so the whole thing is 0. This implies that the range of the controllability map, the control map, is not all of our n. Okay, so the fact that I have a basically what's what's called a left null space. If I have a, a non-zero left null space, that proves that the range of the matrix is not all of our n. So, what does this mean practically? So here we're going to define something called a controllable mode. The mode is basically an eigenvalue. A controllable mode of A, if so a mode of, of a matrix A is controllable if its left eigenvector satisfies WB is not zero. Okay, so that means if WB is equal to zero, I have an uncontrollable mode. So controllable mode, uncontrollable mode, and it's and it's defined by the eigenvalue and the left eigenvector associated with that and so a test for controllability is the matrix the, the pair a b is controllable if and only if there are no uncontrollable modes and corresponding vectors uh, left eigenvectors so this is another test for controllability and it relies upon modes we also can define this matrix associated with the Popoff, Hottas, Rosenbrock test for controllability, which says that this, this pair AB is controllable if and only if the rank of this matrix is equal to N for all the complex values of C. Okay. Now it turns out that this matrix actually, because I have ZI minus A, this matrix, actually this portion itself, has rank N for almost all values of C the only place where it might not have full rank is at, at the eigenvalues of A. And so even though this says this should be equal to N for all complex values of Z, actually we only need to look at the eigenvalues of A, the, the values of Z that are eigenvalues of A. So we don't have to look over the entire complex plane. So suppose the system has an uncontrollable mode. Okay, so WA is equal to lambda W and WB is equal to zero. So if we look at W times XC evaluated at lambda, where Z is equal to lambda, so I multiply through by W, 
Okay, so I can distribute W throughout. So I'm going to have W times this quantity and W times B. But because W is a left eigenve eigenvector, if I take this term over to the other side, I get, I get this. And that's 0. And WB is 0. So this shows that the, dub, the same W, the left eigenvector for an uncontrollable mode, basically causes this matrix to drop rank. It shows that, that that matrix is not full rank for all Z. So we've looked at the controllability Gramian and, and modal aspects of controllability. We're going to move on to talk a little bit more about the control map.